Hello and welcome to my channel, I Went to Lose Gaming. I've been on and off gathering clips for this DPS showdown for three weeks now, ever since you guys overwhelmingly voted for Eula to participate. In today's video, we'll be pitting three of our favorite characters, Eula, Xiao, and Arataka Ito, in a head to head DPS showdown. There's a huge twist in today's video, and that is that today's video is sponsored by Ace Defender. With a 4.5 rating on the Google Play Store and with over 33,000 ratings, Ace Defender is killing it. Ace Defender is the ultimate waifu collector, tower defense, idol, SRPG, labyrinth crawling, tower conquering, PvP game all in one. Collect up to 48 different heroes and relish in the unexpectedly gorgeous live 2D art for all your favorite waifus and husbandos in Ace Defender. There are nearly 2,000 levels across over 40 chapters and two new heroes are added every two weeks, so there is never a lack of epic waifu collecting, tower defense, idol, SRPG, labyrinth crawling, tower conquering, PvP content. Level up your heroes by cannibalizing them and equipping epic gear to create the perfect lineup of your favorite waifus and husbandos. PvE consists of exploring tons of dungeons and tons of regions, tons of special trials, and my favorite game mode, tons of tower defense. PvP is where you pwn noobs all across your server and even across other servers as well. Ace Defenders actually respects your time and has tons of quality of life features like 2 times and 4 times gameplay speeds. And the most recent addition to Ace Defender is Brenda the Demon Spear. Brenda does massive damage across all game modes. She's the ultimate new waifu and she also weakens your opponent's damage and can heal herself. There's also the brand new event, the Realm of Deities, where you can build your castle and train soldiers to conquer stuff for endless treasure. Fight with your allies and power up your heroes. You can get a huge head start by downloading the game from the link below. You'll get 10 Royal Recruit tickets after completing Chapter 2 Level 8. To use these tickets, tap on Sky City, Tavern, Recruit 10X. So what are you waiting for? Smash that link down below to get started with Ace Defender today. Huge thanks to them for sponsoring today's video. In my last DPS showdown between Xiao, Ito, and Noel, both Xiao and Ito were at Constellation Zero with free-to-play weapons. In this DPS showdown, we're going to take a look at how ridiculously overpowered Xiao and Ito are at Constellation 6 with their signature 5-star weapons at Refinement 5. And another quick fun fact, unlike Ganyu who has been in 7 of my DPS showdowns, Yula has been in just one single DPS showdown of mine shortly after her release. One might think I'm being cold towards her, so today I'm going to try to make it up to her. Frankly, DPS showdowns with my methods of measurements are pretty unfair with Eula, and that's what we'll be doing in today's video, pushing her and the boys to the absolute limit. My Xiao will use the Primordial Jade Wing Spear and Staff of Homa depending on which weapon is better for the situation, both at Refinement 5 of course. Xiao's talents are at 10, 12, and 12, and he is at Constellation 6. Can Xiao blow the competition away, or will he be gone with the wind? Next let's take a look at my Arataka Ito's builds. He is using the Red Horn Stone Thresher at Refinement 5, and sadly, my Ito has the worst artifacts among these three characters. I have been abnormally unlucky with the timepiece and have yet to get a single defense percent timepiece for the Husk of Opulent Dreams with double crit. His talents are also the lowest overall, but only by a bit at 10, 11, and 12. And of course, he's at Constellation 6. Let's see if Ito can rock this DPS showdown or if he'll crumble to the Shogunate. And finally, we have the long-awaited return to one of my DPS showdowns, the Sneeze Drift Knight, Eula Lawrence. Constellation 6 Eula is notorious for being Teyvat's largest nuclear bomb. My Eula's artifacts are a bit better than my Ito's, but if you know how Eula works, most of the time it's less about her overall artifact quality and more about crit fishing with just enough damage to one-shot something. Nonetheless, my Eula is swinging around a Refinement 5 Song of Broken Pines. Her talents are at 9, 12, and 13, and as previously mentioned, my Eula is at Constellation 6. Can Eula drift her way to victory or will she be taken for a spin? Now of course with any of these videos we need to discuss the methodology and disclaimers. For this video there is less of an emphasis on overworld shenanigans although I will of course include some of those. I'm using the same timing methodology as I always have, but that will open up a topic worthy of discussion later on in this video. I also use Zhongli when it's reasonable and since I've been gathering clips for this since 3 weeks ago we have many high HP full team scenarios in the previous Abyss 12 and the current Abyss 12. So we have an unusually high amount of situations to look at for how these characters perform in many different single target and multi-target scenarios. 
Also, huge thanks to Shintenzu for some of the shout clips in this video. Before patch 2.4, I couldn't get Shadow Constellation 6, so he stepped up and provided me with the runs I needed for the patch 2.3 Abyss. And also big thanks to Mr. 89 for providing me with one of the Eula runs in this video. And now for everyone's favorite part of the video, the disclaimers. Each of the showcases in this video were done to the best of our abilities within a reasonable amount of time. There are most certainly execution errors, oversights, and more. Time can be saved in all of the following scenarios, some more than others. All of the characters in this video are extravagantly well built and are not indicative of an average player's character's performance. Just because character A did better than character B in a specific scenario does not mean the character A is better than character B. This is simply one point of anecdotal information from some guy who plays this game way too much. Please take everything with a giant grain of salt. And with all that out of the way, we can finally get started with our first and favorite volunteer, the Cryo Regisvine. Our poor Cryo Regisvine friend is everyone's favorite appetizer for damage showcases. As is the case for all my DPS showdowns, I start recording after the Regisvine has been knocked down, and then the character takes action. <laughs> For my Xiao, without any external buffs, his 3 E's are not enough to take out the Cryo Regiswine. As such, Xiao still needs to use his burst and then quickly finish off his salad before Daddy Zhongli yells at him to finish his vegetables. With such a small HP pool, Ito was able to bonk it just a couple of times to tragically murder another innocent giant plant just a couple of frames faster than Xiao managed to. And now for the beginning of the discussion about Eula. Earlier I mentioned that I wanted to open a discussion about how timing should be done with these showcases. The situation here is that Eula is able to precast her burst prior to the Regisvine's orb being broken and also during Bennett's cooldown. This allows Bennett to then break the orb before Eula's burst explodes and then our Regisvine gets blown up just 21 frames after it becomes vulnerable. For now, I'm keeping my old method of timing these runs which leads to this comically fast performance for our Spindrift Knight. Next we have my personally most desired pet in Teyvat, the Primo Geo Vishap. Throughout all my DPS showdowns, I have always begun timing right when the Primo Geo Vishap becomes vulnerable. Let's see how our contestants do. Although Xiao's single target DPS isn't the best outside of his first three E's, he was still able to take it out in a single burst infusion window, leading to a very respectable 14.2 seconds clear time. However, I did need to rely on the Primo Geo Vishap to blow itself up to achieve this time, and even though the beginning wasn't perfect, this was still the best time I managed due to the fast primordial shower. As for Ito, while this is a terrible fight for him, the Primo Geo Vishap has 70% Geo resistance. Geo Resonance and Zhongli Shield do help mitigate this, but he is still doing a lot less damage than he does against other targets. Unless Ito had a rock solid performance by taking it out in a single infusion window and without the Primo Geo Vishap blowing itself up. Now we have Eula. Honestly, starting the timer from when the Primo Geo Vishap becomes vulnerable is a bit problematic when Eula competes. Eula is able to build stacks during the Primo Geo Vishap's near invulnerable state. This allows her to instantly one-shot the Primo Geo Vishap when it becomes vulnerable. Anyway, let me know what you think a fair method of measuring this type of stuff is. And just to even the odds a bit, we'll take on the Magu Kenki, who has two phases to deal with and is actually invincible. As usual, I start timing when the Magu Kenki becomes vulnerable. This is where Xiao having a long-winded burst infusion duration is very helpful. By wiping out the first form of Magu Kenki with his first three E's and then a plunge attack or something, Xiao is still able to have his burst up for the second half of the fight. This allows him to finish out the Magu Kenki in just a single burst infusion. Here, here. 
Ito, interestingly, has the opposite problem and opposite solution. Ito's burst from fusion is much shorter, and as such, the Mago Kenki's invulnerability window takes up a huge chunk of his burst time. However, Ito's cooldown is also pretty low, and he's able to get his burst back up for the second phase. And as for Eula, she finally has a situation where she needs to rely on a relatively subpar outside of burst state. Still, the overall Mago Kenki's first form is easily disposed of with a couple of autos and a hold E. However, Eula's burst is stacked and ready to one-shot Mago Kenki's second phase, which was a completely trivial task for our Spindrift Knight. And now for another interesting fight, but this time against two targets. And I've allowed the use of teammates as well. Originally, when I did this, I did this without food, but Shintenzu decided he wanted to do it with food and I followed suit. Let's see how they all did. Based on the rules of this fight, characters are allowed to precast and pre-buff themselves before warping to the Bethysmal Vishaps. I recreated the buffing process since Shintenzu's original clip didn't include this part, but by casting Zolin's Shield, activating Freedom Sword on Bennett, and then the Thrilling Tales with Klee, and casting Xiao's Burst, Xiao can be fully buffed when warping in. Then a triple dash with the first dash not passing through, and then another triple dash with the same thing allowed Xiao to clean this up in an impressive 8 seconds. Ito's pre-buff process was very similar, activating essentially the same buffs but with Goro instead of Klee. By first bringing the Vishap on the right one hit away from death, and then clubbing the other Vishap to death, you can then snipe the first one with Ito's ranged Ushi toss before it manages to get away. This is the first time where the range on Ushi helped me tremendously. As for Eula, you may have wondered what the heck even happened. Well, all she had to do is build some stacks on her burst prior to warping in without any food even, and then the rest is history as both the Vishaps had no idea what even hit them. And that marks the end of the overworld section for this DPS showdown. As we can see by implementing the method of measuring time as I have throughout the history of my DPS showdowns. This heavily favors Eula's backloaded burst damage as she's able to one-shot everything but the Magu Kenki, the instant they become vulnerable. However, even if we measure from a different point in time, the delta between Eula's time and the other two would be nearly the same, with only Cryo Registfine providing any meaningful difference. Anyway, let me know what you think about the time measuring metric for DPS showdowns. This is frankly an outlier and so far only a problem when Eula is competing in this manner. Now with the overworld portion out of the way, we'll be dividing the Abyss portions into two different Abyss 12 top halves. 2.3 Abyss 12 had a much heavier focus on AoE damage with multiple wolves and no less than two targets per wave. Meanwhile, 2.4 Abyss 12 is much more focused on single target boss fights with an AoE chamber at the end. It'll be interesting to see how these characters perform across these different environments. The runs we'll be doing are continuous runs. This means that you need to manage energy for your team moving from one chamber to the next. Retrying each chamber is allowed, but again, still from the same continuous run. And I made a poll on this as to whether or not Raiden should be allowed to be used with Eula, since the two of them are like Milk Tea and Boba. And you guys overwhelmingly voted yes, because the whole point of speedrunning is to speedrun, so using their best teams makes the most sense here. However, I did also do some runs with Eula as a solo DPS character as well. Anyway, let's start with version 2.3's Abyss 12 top half. Shintenzu did the Xiao run by the way, I did the Ito run, and my friend Mr. 89 did Eula's run.
All right, so while Xiao is gonna take another 30 seconds or so, I'll use this time to point some stuff out. Xiao had a lot of trouble with 2.3's Abyss 12. This is largely due to the two large Rift Hounds in 12.1.1 and 12.3.1. Xiao is also faced with massive energy issues because he does not create energy particles during his burst, and neither do his teammates. This leads to around 20 seconds across all three chambers spent purely on funneling energy to Xiao and his team. Unlike many other compositions that can quickly destroy a chamber and move on to the next one without needing to specifically battery, Xiao needs to spend valuable time creating particles and waiting for them to fly to him before the next chamber, or else it will be even more difficult for a second rotation in the next chamber. Going back and looking at Shintenzu's 12-2-1, this is exactly what happened as he's just, you know, waiting for the particles to fly to him before taking out the Geo Vishaps. Ito, meanwhile, did not have this energy problem and he was like a never stopping battering ram. Thanks to his own particles generated, as well as Albedo's off field particles and Zhongli's off field particles, this led to Ito almost always having his burst available. While Ito's and Xiao's multi target DPS is comparable, the dedicated supports and lack of energy issues and Ito's hitbox advantages versus the large Rift Hounds really pulled Ito ahead of Xiao in this example. Also, 1221 has Geo Vishaps which heavily resist Geo damage, but that doesn't really matter to Ito as he still effortlessly destroyed that chamber. As you can see, Ito's team spent literally maybe 4 seconds across this entire run, battering Ito compared to roughly 20 plus seconds spent by Xiao. And Ito's Kisugiri slashes are hilariously long enough to even hit the Rift Hounds as they dash backwards. So Mr. 89's Raiden Yula run was the fastest time for the top half of 2.3's Abyss 12 until Shen He was released, at least to the extent of my knowledge. We can see here that these two characters flow seamlessly into each other, alternating their bursts to wipe out waves. And 12-2-1, being as easy as it is, was the perfect opportunity for Raiden to battery her entire team by holding back and just spamming normal attacks in preparation for 12-3-1. Then it was up to Eula to do 1 million damage basically at once against the two last Rift Towns in 12-3-1, securing Raiden Eula the clear victory in this run. And next we have the brand new 2.4 Abyss 12 top half. And I actually did a total of 6 runs and variations, but we'll start off with the fastest times for each character. So you may have looked at these runs and thought, what the heck, why is Raiden in Xiao's party? In my poll, I asked if Raiden could be used with Eula, and frankly, it'd be unfair if Xiao was unable to use Raiden as well. This is also the fastest way I'm aware of that Xiao can clear the top half of Abyss 12. Xiao functions quite well as a viridescent support Favonius Lance wielder with the option to use his fast burst to provide Raiden with some result. All of these traits honestly make him a reasonable viridescent support character for Raiden. However, unfortunately, Xiao does not speed things up compared to using Kazuha instead of him. 
On the other hand, Eula actually does speed up Raiden's time substantially, because Eula is able to one-shot 12-3-1's second wave. This allows Raiden to not need to wait for her second burst, which saves quite a bit of time. While Eula also did not do the majority of the work in her run with Raiden, she's actually a net improvement in comparison to the conventional Hyper Raiden carry archetype. As for Ito, sadly 12-2-1 is a hugely unfavorable chamber for him due to the 70% Geo resistance that the Primo Geo Bishop has. Nonetheless, he was still fairly competitive to these two Raiden teams. Now don't worry, I did do non-Raiden focused runs for the other characters. Animo Xiao was the slowest that I did at 125 seconds. Shintenzu did manage to do a 118 second continuous run, but as you can see, Xiao's range here for continuous runs as an Animo main DPS character is around this time range. Funnily enough, Cryo Xiao was significantly faster than Animo Xiao, yielding a 102 second clear time. Cryo Xiao has better energy management for continuous runs as you only have to worry about battering the Cryo supports. The biggest crippling factor to Animo Xiao's performance in continuous runs in comparison to the other characters is, like I said, his need to constantly funnel energy into himself near the end of a chamber. Neither Raiden, nor Ito, or even Cryo Xiao have this problem. Anyway, here are all the results of my 2.4 Abyss 12 top half runs. Funnily enough, Xiao is actually a better Cryo DPS than Yula is when paired with Shen He. Xiao's rapid attacks quickly output Shen He's quill stacks, which is where the majority of this team's damage comes from. Yula is decent thanks to her additional Cryo Shred, but still not quite as capable as Xiao as a Cryo DPS character. In the end, it looks like Raiden really ended up winning this DPS showdown, with Eula being able to actually improve Raiden's time substantially. Support Xiao came in second, supporting a hyper carry Raiden, and then Ito's team was in third. It's worth emphasizing again that 12-2-1 gives Ito a huge disadvantage. In fourth place, we have Cryo Xiao, who when paired with Constellation 6 Shen He, is hilariously viable. And then finally, we have Cryo Eula and Animo Xiao, essentially tied for last place. Taking a look at all these results, it's great to see Xiao being competitive against the Bethismal Vishaps. Hopefully someday Mihoyo will help our edgy emo boy out by giving him proper support and a way for him to have better consecutive burst uptime. And hopefully they'll provide some additional ways to draw out Eula's max potential as well. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out today's sponsor, Ace Defender, as they make these types of videos possible. And huge thanks again to Shintenzu as well as Mr. 89 for their runs. Let me know what you think about these results and if there was anything unexpected. Personally what surprised me the most is how good Cryo Xiao is and how competitive he is as a main Cryo DPS character. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out. <laughs> Let's go see.